Hello and welcome to this Varos Designer screencast. My name is Liz. As part of the Getting Started series, this tutorial will cover further fixture layout features and advanced plan tools. In our last tutorial covering basic fixture layout, we looked at introducing abstract background images to assist with fixture layout. We also looked at duplication tools that allowed us to create geometric arrays. Here I'm going to take a little time to look at more organic shapes and how best to lay those out and some of the tools that we have to make that simpler. So let's make a start by changing the background image to include some additional structures that have a more organic shape to them. It may require a little bit of imagination but I am considering this to be a water feature that perhaps has lights around the perimeter and these to be some sort of structure art piece that will have fixtures on them. So how would we go about laying out these fixtures? Initially undoubtedly you would bring in a generic fixture or one from a manufacturer's library. I am going to make these fixtures circular and smaller. And now I can start duplicating those. Now here I could perhaps utilize the the circle initially as I have something of a circle there. I'm going to guess at a radius of about 50 and let's put in say six fixtures anti-clockwise from there. Mm, it's not bad. If I can now drag that one into position. There's a duplication tool which I'm going to show you now which uses a keyboard shortcut on a Windows machine it will be the control key, on a Mac it will be an Apple. And holding the control key before you start to drag will actually create a second incidence of the fixture selected. In this case I'm just using a single fixture because I've got new parameters for this fixture type. So I can now hold the control key down and move around adding fixtures as I go. Another keyboard shortcut which is particularly useful is the tab and shift tab when you have a fixture selected on the plan. If I go back to my first fixture and hit tab I'm now going through the fixtures in order and shift tab will take me back. A combination of the tab key and the cursor keys will allow me to move around and nudge my fixtures to where they need to be. I currently have my grid spacing set at 4 pixels so that's the current nudge distance. And this is allowing me just to tidy up my positioning. So that will do for now. When placing fixtures on your plan the software gives each fixture in order a numeric reference number. This reference number can be changed but it's not an efficient way to do things so the more you can lay out your fixtures in order so that they are numbered in a consecutive scheme that either relates to their patching or to their physical layout the more useful that will be for you in terms of programming and the less pain it will be for, for patching and discovering where the fixtures are. So the underlying objective when planning your layout is doing it in an order where the fixture numbering makes sense. So with that in mind I'm going to use the control key again to borrow this fixtures properties and place it at the top of these spiral structures and I'm going to use the duplicate tool again to give me a column of these fixtures. The origin of our plan is in the top left hand corner so you can use positive width values to go to the right and negative to go to the left and negative to go upwards and positive to go downwards. So I'm going to give myself let's say six fixtures and now I'm going to use the tab and nudge function to drop these on the plan. Now so far I've only used the control key to copy single fixtures but I can also lasso multiple fixtures. I think these two are going to be on the same angle again. 
and they will be maintaining their numeric order. That was 163, 164, 165, 166. I might just copy a couple of single ones here. But now I have a feeling that this curve could all be copied. And there we are. Overshot with that one. I can delete that individual fixture. And I happen to know that these two shapes are identical, so now I can lasso them and drag a copy of that entire layout. So there we go. So a strong functional layout rather than a scaled layout will always give a better experience with designer. For instance, this could be a 50 meter building and a 10 meter water feature and these spiral sculptures could be half a mile away and 10 feet high. It doesn't really matter. The fact is these are the three zones that the project is controlling and giving yourself a good layout which is easy to visualize at any zoom is the critical thing for a good programming experience. We recommend experimenting with your layout in terms of numbering the fixtures, in terms of the scale of the plan and in terms of the scale of the fixtures. Visualizing is absolutely the most important factor here. And I hope I've illustrated that zoning with blobs of colour in paint rather than a accurate CAD plan may well be the best approach. There is one final way of bringing your fixtures into your plan. If the information about the fixtures, the XY coordinates specifically, already exist electronically in some other format, you can use our import fixture plan feature to bring in a comma separated file with that data. Typically this may be the result of a CAD layout where the position of the fixtures has already been placed and those blocks can be exported or if the layout is one that could be more easily calculated in an Excel style spreadsheet. But effectively what you're ending up with is a comma separated file such as this one where you have your manufacturer reference number and model number at the beginning of the file and then your fixture reference number and the XY data. Importing a file such as this will give you your layout on the plan. This could also be used for renumbering fixtures. You can export the XY information from the fixtures that you have laid out on your plan, take that into something like Excel, reformat the fixtures for whatever reference purposes you require and then import the fixtures back into the plan. Lastly, let me take this opportunity to say that Faros support is of course only too happy to help advise you at these early stages in your plan. It's much better to help you at the offset than to untangle things later, so please don't ever hesitate to contact us. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Please join us again for more. Thank you.